And all of you right now are sitting right in the middle of my area of responsibility. Can't be. I have to warn you about a, a safety hazard that we have here. My wife brought me a dribble cup this morning from back there. So if you see spots on my shirt, <laughs> I'm not drooling, really. So is everybody having fun here? Amen. Can't be. Great place, right? Yes. 42 acres. Campy is 42 acres, 22 buildings, 180 full hookup RV sites, and room for about 50 or 60 more RVs with temporary hookups. How many RV places have you all been with that kind of size and availability of different things? Well, even the small ones, how many of those have no unpaid or no paid workers and don't charge, you know, we live on donations here and we operate with your help. Nobody in Campy is paid to do anything except contractors that we have to hire from outside because we can't do it ourselves, you know, like air conditioning and things. So how many of you came and helped that can't be from January 1st till now? Look around. People with their hands up. And I especially want to thank all of those who came in September to help us get Camp B ready because we were kind of low on volunteers because of the COVID thing that everybody's concerned about COVID. So donations, co-directors, we've increased the donation, the suggested donations. Most everybody I know paid more than that anyway, but we're running a deficit. Camp B is not a cheap place to operate. It takes money just, just to mow the grass around here. You'd be surprised how much we spend on fuel for the, gra for the lawnmowers. It's, it's a big place, and it takes a lot of work to keep it going. So sign up. You can sign up for a month, get credit for a soldier. If, if you're just passing through, stop and give us a hand. Uh, if you're bored, come here. If you want to get away from the snow up north, come down here like we do in the wintertime. You know, it's lots of opportunities to serve. You know, you won't get paid, but we've got a tremendous retirement plan. It's out of this world. Amen. Amen. Let's see if I can do a better job than Larry did. <laughs> see, you, you do it like this and you go, ah, there we go. That's, that, that, that's our job title. Can you read all that? <laughs> yeah, I was, was co-director of Camp B before, back in 2013 to 16, something like that. But I did not have a camp manager then. I do now. Yeah. yeah. Joe and Wendy just amaze me. I mean, they're Energizer bunnies. They're all the time doing something, and the place shows it. And Charles talked about one of the needs that we need. We really need this thing. Let's see if I can change the shot slide here. That's Joe up on top of the ladder on the Kubota bucket. He's working on the security light there. But he didn't think this up all by himself. We've been doing that since the last time I was a coal director here. That when we put cameras up in the office and put all the, the uh, alarm systems in around here, that's Larry Tabor up there working on that camera. That's scary. This is what we need. It'll fit through the door. 
We can haul it around. It's easy to maintain, but it's not easy to buy. So donations, please. Joe and Wendy are really a godsend. And I, I mean that uh, truthfully. They, they are really good. Joe is supposed to be here. Is Joe here? Okay, Joe. Here's Joe. I told him I was... I warned him that he was going to do the presentation, but I figured I'd do the preamble. So, here's Joe, and watch out for this cup. <laughs> Good morning again. Good morning, Joe. <laughs> I brought notes, so hopefully I won't ramble on too long, but uh, uh, I wanted to start with this morning, you know it's been dry, and we had a little rain last night. Yes! <laughs> the rain gauge this morning said we had approximately 3,500. That's a drop That's a drop in the bucket for what we need. And I went in and looked at the records to just give you an idea. In the months of September, September 2019, the year-to-date annual rainfall was 48 inches. 2020, 47. 2021, 58. 2022, 26. That tells you how dry we are. Just <clears throat> So that presents all of its own, but that's just a, a little bit of trivia there. I wanted to start this morning with a little bit of background as well. Um, it's been three years since the last workshop. Last time we had a workshop, we didn't have a camp manager. Um, when we first became sojourners in 2017 through 2018, we'd been here and I, I saw that things needed to be, some help needed to be done at, at Camp B, so we decided we we're going to winter here in 2019 and just help out in whatever way we could. It didn't take too long for somebody to say, oh, you can be a camp manager then. Because at that point, the co-directors were struggling to try to get that resolved They'd looked at trying to get people to volunteer for six months at a time, and that didn't seem to work. So they're looking at three months at a time. That wasn't working real well. So they finally got to a month-by-month -month basis. So I volunteered to start doing it on a month-to-month -month basis, and I committed from November 1st of 2019 through, I think it was March of 2020, is what we had committed to, to work over the winter. Of course, 2020, COVID hit. Um, and so in the middle of... March of 2020, the co-directors approached us and asked us if we would be camp managers. And so we said, yes, we consider doing that, but let's sit down and talk about that and what does that involve, etc. And, and so we came up with some guidelines, what we might need to do. Uh, but we quickly said, hey, we're from the upper Midwest. This is East Texas. I mean, Bayou country is just right there. In July and August, just, nah, not our cup of tea. So they agree that we could take off during the July and August time frame and have our summer sabbatical and get out of the summer heat. So we very much appreciate that and need that to take a break from Camp B. So that in mind, basically I, we started Camp Manager of November 2019. So here in a couple of weeks, it'll be three years we've been Camp Managers. Um, so I, thank you. Uh, I don't say that for the recognition, but most of you haven't been here for three years. Most people haven't been here for three years because of COVID. So a lot of things have changed in those three years. And I want to just give you a little bit of a feel for what we've attempted to do in that time frame. Uh, basically, we started with just cleaning and organizing. Uh, it was evident in many cases that consistency hadn't been there and, and it was time to start doing some things. Um, an example was I think there were somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 string trimmers in that tool shed. Well, I can only use one at a time, and if I have two people working, that's still only three. Uh, and some of them were 20 years old, and so some of those things, decisions need to be made about what to do with those things. So it's just time to get those things cleaned up and organize things. So a lot of cleaning and reorganizing have taken place. Uh, simplifying the maintenance processes, I've tried to make those things simple and straightforward so that they can be done easily, readily. It can be quickly picked up by those that come in to help. Uh, try to eliminate duplicate efforts. 
Uh, we've always had the checklists to do every month, um, but it was obvious that those things had just been pulled together and pulled together and, and we were checking air filters every month. Uh, that's not necessary. Let's do that every 90 days and that's adequate. So those kinds of things. Um, ensuring that maintenance on equipment is being done accurately and completely, just going through those things. Uh, as I've stated with other people and shown examples, we have log books for equipment. I've tried to make sure they're all organized in the same manner, that they've got the same things in them, so it doesn't matter if I pick one up for the lawnmower or if I pick one up for the golf cart. Um, they're all organized basically in the same manner. That and, and trying to make sure that everything that needs to be encompassed at Camp B can be done. Again, like Scott said, there's 42 acres, 22 buildings, 180 RV sites, and for those of you that haven't mowed or don't know about mowing, on a zero-turn commercial five-foot deck lawnmower, it's 12 hours of seat time to get this area mowed. 12 hours to mow. And that's, for me, that's, I have two, two speeds, stop and go. And it takes me 12 hours to get that done. <laughs> um, so if someone is not as willing to go that fast, it takes a little longer, obviously. Uh, I've also tried to create an annual calendar plan so that those things that don't come up every month or whatever, um, we include. One of the things that comes to mind is the septic system. That's pretty much hidden. Don't remember those things, but it needs to be done on a reoccurring basis. And how often should that be and when? Uh, some of the thing, other things we've tried to do is, is make uh, general upgrades to the cabins, maybe just updating things. Uh, you know, in cabin four, we put in some new ceiling fans. Uh, we put in some new switches. So the ceiling fans now look the same instead of having two completely different colors. We took the 1950s fan control out of there and put in a newer one, so it's a, a little more readily usable. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, pretty much the rest of the campus, not counting the honeycomb, I'm pretty sure the rest of the campus has LED lighting in all the buildings. There may be a, an odd fixture here or there that hasn't been done. Uh, we have not done the honeycomb. Obviously, there's, see, that one needs to be done. <laughs> uh, there are 42 light fixtures in here, uh, and they all, we'd like to upgrade them at some point, but, you know, until something starts happening, uh, we haven't done those. But that's another thing we've tried to do. Something else that might be obvious is that, uh, since we've gotten things cleaned up and organized and, and the other things that we've really made an effort to is trying to get the fence lines cleaned up, the underbrush cut back, keep those things back and try to maintain those things. And so we've done that. I feel like we've gotten to a point where we can maintain now. We're, we're past that clean up and get things to a certain point. Uh, so we started working on landscaping. I don't know if you noticed around the, the uh, office, the front office, we've tried to update that. Um, put in some new plants. We've transplanted some plants up there, like the elephant ears. Have you seen those babies up there? <laughs> you can't miss them. Those were a small plant next to the air conditioner at the lodge entryway, and I said, well, this is hampering the air conditioner. Let's see if we can move these up here, and they took off. They look beautiful up there. Um, so with that in mind, um, also, trees have been planted. Uh, there's fruit trees that have been planted. Um, there's pecan trees that have been planted to replace those things that were taken out by the tornado in 2016. There's 11 pecan trees that have been planted and nine fruit trees. The sad story is that between the deer, the hard freeze of a year and a half ago, and the drought this summer, um, there's two dead pecan trees out there, and I think we've lost three or four of the fruit trees. Uh, but some improvements as well there. Um, I didn't have anything to do with that piece of it, but and we also lost trees. Uh, if you're in lower H or in A, those small trees that were there, the Chinese tallow trees got all killed by the frost. There are 25 Chinese tallow trees that were taken out by the frost, that hard cold. There are many other shrubs and things that were affected by that as well. So, And then, so working on the landscaping, starting from the front, working this way, the next area we're trying, going to try to work on will be around the lodge and then updating around the honeycomb, which is in, there's dead brush, uh, shrubs and bushes there as well from the freeze. So those are coming down. So there's always work to be done. Uh, there's repairs that need to be done. I, I, I always tell people I have four lists. I, I, we work off of a, a whiteboard that shows the things that need to be done. So 
There's the whiteboard list, the things that are going to go on the whiteboard, the wish list, and Joe's list, because I've got a whole other list of things as a camp manager that need to be done, you know, office things, um, those kinds of things. So having said all that, we've made decisions about how some things need to be done, how things need to continue to be done, making sure we're covering those things. Um, so how many of you are NCIS fans? NCIS fans out there? You remember Gibbs? Gibbs has his rules? Well, Joe has his rules, too. <laughs> uh, and I know by now I've gotten a reputation of being a stickler for some of the details. Yeah, I'm an eat and tidy kind of guy. Everything has its place and everything in its place. Um, so, some of the rules. And I brought a visual aid. I don't know how many of you have seen this, but it's hanging up in the lodge. And at the top it says house rules. If you sleep on it, make it up. If you wear it, hang it up. If you spill it, wipe it up. If you empty it, fill it. If you turn it on, turn it off. If it cries, love it. If it howls, feed it. If you open it, close it. Right. Those, are, those are some good ones. I have a few to go with that. <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong, I know there's lots of ways to do these things, and you may think there's a better way to do it, or you have a better way that you do it at your house, or in your shop, or whatever the case might be. These are the things that we've come to deciding here at Camp B. We pretty much have a system set up, and we need your assistance to keep that system set up. So there, if you could just help us out with these things. One of my first rule is read. Now, that's an easy one, but most people don't read. We have signs, informational signs, directional signs. We have logbooks with instructions for maintenance, um, how to maintain that stuff. So read. And then rule number two, follow what you've read. Um, a good example, the trash cans, the containers on the cart right on the top is a label that tells, can't be any cardboard in there. Well, I don't think it says that. But no yard waste in those. Well, that's one thing. And everything that goes in there is supposed to be in a tied and secured bag. Well, I looked in there the other day and there's, oh, let's see, there's a glass jar and there's some cans and there's, obviously nobody's read the label before they put things in it. Just one example. Uh, so that's rule number two. Put it back clean. If you use something, no problem. It's all here for us to use. It's our camp. Please use it. But I, I pulled uh, some tools out from my class the other day. I pulled a hand sander out of the drawer. Sawdust fell all over the drawer. It was just loaded. Somebody had used it and put it back that way. It, the little dust collection bin on the back of it was choked full. Somebody couldn't use it because it was blowing dust everywhere. It was too full. Um, and here's one of my... I'm going to put Mike on the spot here for a minute. <laughs> put it back exactly where you found it. I came in the other day to uh, check all the air filters in here. Well, there's a six-foot aluminum step ladder that typically resides in here. Couldn't find it. I looked in the back. I looked in the classrooms. I looked in the lodge. I looked in the tool shed. I looked in the barn. I looked in the trailer shed. I looked around other places. And I said, does somebody know where this is at? Mike said, oh, yeah, it's over by my rig. <laughs> I spent 20 minutes. But that's just an example. You know, we've stored those things and found places for those things. And, yeah, it might be convenient for you to leave it in a tool shed after you took it from the barn. But if Jay comes and asks me, hey, where is that such and so I am, I'm going to tell him, hey, it's down in the barn on the shelf in this place. Jay's going to go down there and come back and say, hey, it's not there. And now we've got to go hunting for it. So help us in those manners, please. People have also asked about contributions. Um, what can we do to contribute, et cetera? Some of the things we have in mind that we'd like to do is, uh, those of you that are staying in cabins, we have a couple old tube TVs in the cabins yet. Uh, when was the last time any of you had a tube TV in your house? So, you know, <laughs> you've probably been through several flat screen TVs at this point. Uh, so that's some things we want to update. Scott mentioned uh, the lift we'd like to do. That thing would be very helpful in a lot of ways, uh, not just for doing security lights and cameras, but 
working on the buildings, trimming trees. Uh, last spring we had some wind come through and knocked out some branches. We didn't have a way to get up there to trim it, so there was a great big old limb that hung there for several days until the wind knocked it down. Luckily it was out of the way where there's not a lot of traffic, but that could have easily been a safety hazard. So, um, <clears throat> I, I think I've already mentioned that there's, we've established certain ways to do things here, and we really need your support in doing it in that manner because that's what we've set for camp. That's how we need to continue. I'm not opposed to suggestions, improvements. I'm always open to that. One of my pet peeves is, well, we've always done it that way. I just, ooh, that sets my teeth on edge. <laughs> I just, we, we're all better than that, and we know we like to do work. We like to serve. We have good ideas. There's a vast amount of knowledge in this room, and so I'm always open to ideas and feedback. If you, the old saying, if you see something, say something. Um, and if you see something and you can fix it, fix it. I'm also very much about doing it the right way. So, um, <clears throat> and please, feedback, always welcome your feedback. If you have ideas about doing things, let's talk about those things and maybe we can employ those things. And then again, maybe we already have plans for something and that will not fit into the plans that we have laid out. So don't be discouraged when we say, well, no, we're not going to do it that way. Uh, because we may already have things in mind about how something is going to be handled or we've made plans about some, the way something's going to work. So I'd ask for questions, but I think that'll just open it up. <laughs> You're all ready for a break. So that's all I have for this morning. Thank you very much. All right, let's take a break to about 10.45 and come on back, and we're going to hear from Larry Crone. Fun night meeting up here. Fun night meeting up here. Fun night.